Hey, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and today I'm excited to announce that we have added 44 new smart materials to our rapidly growing library. So what exactly are smart materials and how do they work? Well, let's dive in and find out. In short, smart materials are multi-layer materials that you can import into your mix with just a single click of the mouse. These materials utilize Mixer's robust mask stack, allowing them to dynamically adjust with whatever model or surface you have in your scene. Every smart material is carefully crafted and vetted by some of the best artists in the industry, ensuring that not only is the look and feel of the texture top-notch, but that it's also efficient and functional for use. In addition to color layers and procedural masking, Mixer's smart materials also leverage scan data from the Megascans library, offering the perfect balance of real-world surface values and dynamic procedural masking to generate stunning results. And perhaps best of all, these finely crafted materials are 100% customizable. So whether you want to change the color of a surface, adjust the amount of dirt and grime, or even change a plastic surface to a metal one, Mixer smart materials are designed to make your texturing experience more efficient than ever without sacrificing any of the control. So now that we know what smart materials are, let's take a minute and see how we can put them to good use. Here we are in Mixer, and I've loaded up this really cool sci-fi tank turret created by my colleague Victor Oman. This is a game-ready asset that is utilizing normal, ambient occlusion, curvature, and material ID maps, which we'll need for the texturing process. So let's get to texturing this thing by adding a smart material to the mix. To do this, we can click on the Add Surface Layer icon like we would with any other surface material. And then we'll hop over to this drop-down menu here and select the Smart Material category. This will filter our library so that we're only seeing the smart materials we have on our local library. And from here, we can filter it even further by using the search bar. So let's choose this red painted metal and add it to our mix. Immediately, we can see how a smart material is different from a standard surface. We can see that we have some dirt and grime chipping away at our edges, as well as some other layer detail that's created based on the mesh and base textures of the model. This allows the material to dynamically adjust to the specific features of your asset, as opposed to simply tiling a texture over the mesh, which gives us a more natural looking result. And as I mentioned earlier, smart materials are fully customizable, which means we have access to every layer and setting that makes up this material. As we look at the layers included in the smart material, we can see that some layers are more subtle than others, but it's that subtlety that takes these smart materials to the next level. All right, as cool as it might be to have a red tank, I think maybe we should give this thing a bit more of a traditional color. So let's go down to the base painted metal layer here, and then we'll click on the color swatch of the albedo layer and give the albedo a nice desaturated green look to it. There we go. And we'll also drop the roughness a small amount so we can get a little more sheen on the surface. We can also go into the edge scuff layer mask and adjust the levels on the curvature component to make the edges a bit more pronounced. Again, every layer and mask of a smart material can be edited. Let's go ahead now and duplicate this paint layer by pressing Ctrl D and then we'll pull the albedo value down a touch to darken the paint. So I want this layer to add a bit of value breakup to the turret, so what we can do is give this layer a material ID mask by clicking on this icon here, and then if we hold down Q, we can select this green material here on the hatch. This will mask this surface layer so that it's only visible on this specific green portion of the ID map. All right, let's add another smart material to the mix, but instead of clicking on the add surface layer icon, we can actually press L on the keyboard, which will immediately take us to our local library. So now we can go to the Smart Materials dropdown, and then do a quick search for our next smart material. I think this painted tank metal will work well. Now for this material, we'll add a material ID mask to the folder itself. That way we're masking the entire smart material to specific color IDs. And like with the Add Surface Layer icon, we don't even need to click on the Material ID button at the bottom of the mask stack. Instead, we can just press I on the keyboard and we'll add an ID mask to the selected layer or group. So with the ID mask added, let's go ahead and press Q, then click on this red ID color, as well as the orange color beneath it. Now the albedo color for this material is a bit too similar to the base surface we've already applied. So we'll open up the folder, go down to the base paint layer, and darken the albedo value. 
This will continue to help us break up the color and value of the turret surface. Like the smart material we added before, we'll duplicate this base paint layer and then give it another color to add even more breakup. Then we'll just give it a material ID again by pressing I on the keyboard and assign it to the ID just beneath this barrel shroud. And now we have some differentiation between these pieces, but using the same smart material. Let's move back to the smart material library now and search for our next material to add. I think this gunmetal should work pretty well. We'll go ahead and give it a material ID mask and then we'll assign it to this bar right here. And really all we're going to do here is adjust the albedo and roughness values on a couple of the layers, particularly with the chips layer to tone down some of the intensity of the metal. And there we go, this part of the texture is finished. All right, I think the barrel might benefit from having its own smart material applied as well. So let's bounce back to the material library and we'll find and select the sci-fi painted metal smart material. We'll add the ID mask and then press Q to select the barrel color ID. Now, obviously we don't want our barrel to be bright yellow as that kind of defeats the purpose of camouflage. So let's crack open the smart material folder and then we'll go down to the paint layer to adjust the albedo color to a very desaturated brown that's nearly gray. We'll also adjust the albedo color for the cavity grime layer to make its effects a little more subtle. Okay, and that should do it for the base barrel layer. Now these next two smart materials I simply applied without any changes or adjustments to the layers and merely assigned them to the appropriate color IDs. Because these smart materials provided me the look and feel I wanted right out of the box, it saved me the time of having to create the same results by hand but without having to sacrifice quality. So up to this point, we've been applying our smart materials by using the color ID mask feature. However, with smart materials, you don't have to take an all or nothing approach. For example, if we head back to the smart material section of the library, we can add this heavy rust smart material on top of all of our layers. And while this smart material looks quite incredible on its own, we can do more with it than just assign it to specific areas of the mesh using the material ID. Here we're going to leverage the power of Mixer's mask stack to reveal the rust using a combination of procedural and texture driven components. To do this, we'll add a mask stack by pressing this button at the bottom of the layer stack. We can first add a curvature component, which by using edges only and playing with the levels, gives us some nice masking near the edges and some of the slopes to reveal our rust. Then we'll throw on a normal component and have it come from above so that the mask is only revealed on upward facing normals. Then by lowering the opacity, we're mostly showing the curvature map we have below, but we keep a thin layer of rust across all of those upward facing normals. By adding a map component and using an imperfection from the Megascans library, we can add some real world scan data to this mask, which will help add some realistic detail. And if we set this to overlay, we'll be able to use the texture to break up the fall off of our mask. And then we'll add another map component on top of this, this time using an Icelandic moss surfaces displacement map to multiply over all the mask layers. This way we can remove parts of the mask with scan data, which always yields some great results. And if we want to take things even further, we can always add a paintable mask on top of it all and add or remove parts of the mask by hand, which gives you complete and total control over your mask. All right, this rust is feeling a bit strong. So what we can do is go up to the root folder of the smart material and drop the opacity down some to make it a little less pronounced. I also feel that the edge wear is a bit too heavy handed in this particular instance. So I can go to that specific layer in the smart material and reduce the opacity there as well. That's feeling much better. Now that we have a solid base to work with, we can refine this mix even further by adding in decals, additional wear and tear, grime and dirt, and even some more scan data to make the texture truly one of a kind. And if you want to make your own smart materials, don't worry. Saving them is incredibly simple. All you need to do is make sure that the layers you want to be included are grouped together into a folder, which you can do by selecting the layers and pressing Ctrl G. And then all you need to do is right click on the folder and select export as smart material. Then all you need to do is give it a name and hit export. This will save out everything within the folder as a smart material, which will then be available in the smart material dropdown of your library. Now all you need to do is add it to your mix and you're good to go. Mixer smart materials are a great way to boost your productivity without taking away any of your creative freedom. 
And whether you use our handcrafted smart materials or create your own, the goal of this feature is to help you crank out high quality textures faster than ever before. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.